Hello and welcome to episode 77 of Pentagon for Gold where today we are playing against Ajax in the Europa League quarterfinals. We are second in the league despite a, a very strong goal difference, 15 goals over into Inter Milan but we've had a few draws recently against Benevento, Genoa and Roma. A bit disappointing and that has, a res uh, has resulted in a few results that just haven't quite kept us on top of the pile. We've still managed to avoid any defeats outside of the Torino game and the Inter Milan game at the start of the season. Um, but uh, there's not many games left to catch up with Napoli and actually we do play them in a couple of weeks so that could be a big title decider. Um, with regards to Inter Milan, I think we've already played them twice now. Yes we have, we drew at home. So uh, we need to make up three points on them um, by the end of the season. And uh, given our fixtures, that won't necessarily be an easy thing. So, as usual, a pretty strong lineup for this game with Andres going at right back. Um, Hoover sits on the bench and Gentilini is on the left hand side. We've gone for Delict over Belly today, but we'll probably switch the two of them in the second leg. Hannibal, of course, starts in the midfield with Sorrentino Diaz and Migno up front because. Dropping him would be mental. We've also got Gwil back as our uh, uh, on the bench at least. He's uh, had a, an injury that sort of kept him out of a lot of recent games, but it's good to have him back and uh, not have to rely on our two star players to get us through the rest of the season. And uh, that was an early chance for Ajax. Ahmad Diallo with the corner kick here, headed out to Deschamps and McLenahan. Now trying to get past Hannibal, but Frank is there to head away, and Frank has really developed this season. He has got some absolutely brilliant stats if you have a look at him. Look at those physicals. Mentals are very good as well. 18 tackling, 16 marking. He's been, uh, he's been a good signing. Yeah, what a player. Um, very, very glad we've got him in the club, and uh, it's nice to have a player for a bit cheaper than we would other, otherwise expect because it was actually a relegation release clause. Um, from and he was at Burnley who had just been relegated who also had a frankly ridiculous team for, for a team that had been relegated but it is an early goal from Dogan to put us ahead with the assist from Migno not something he often does but he has done a few of them this season and uh, that puts us 1-0 up with the away goal as well which could be all important and now Dogan fresh off scoring able to lead this counter-attack has he got options he does can he find them? He can. And this time he returns the favour to Migno. No mistake with the finish from the Uruguayan. And uh, yeah, we're in a really strong position now. 2-0 up against Ajax away from home. 3-0 make that. Delict with his first goal of the season. Not a header as you'd usually expect from a centre-back, but a good finish from him. We've been very, very clinical so far, so no doubt that will change by the end of the game. We'll have dipped back to a, a standard, you know, standard level of clinicality. But um, we've started well, and uh, Hannibal now. Ball breaks to Dogan, and he's brought down by Solari, so that will be a penalty, unless the referee overturns it. I don't think he will looked to me like it was a pretty stonewall penalty and it is given Hannibal to take and he puts it home 4-0 not even half an hour in might end up showing the Napoli game then given it's more likely to be important than the second leg of this tie not quite sure what's happened to Ajax I think it's just that you know, we've been unusually clinical so far because actually, chance-wise, it's not been a whole lot compared to Ajax. Maybe we've been slightly better in terms of creating them um, because we've got ones that are actually on target. But, uh, you know, that's a fantastic ball into Deschamps and a good save from Sarakaya at his near post. Clears it away only to De Ketelaire and Solari. Finds Hisa. Good ball from Devine into Solari again, and now he faces up Andres. That's a phenomenal block. I think it was probably Delict blocked that. But that was really, really fantastic defending from whoever that was. 
and uh, yeah, it's convincing first half. Let's. I mean, we can't really stop the boys from being a little bit complacent with the rest of this game, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the with the uh, result so far. Zibanda. Divine finds McLenahan with a ton of space on the edge of the box. He finds Solari instead. Doesn't go for the shot himself. And Deschamps' shot is blocked by Andres. Good defending from the German. It might even have been Sorrentino, actually. Heiser. Carpentry with a good tackle, and it's gone out for a goal kick. Perhaps a little bit lucky that that rebounded off Heiser, but uh, we'll take it. Very odd to see De Ketelaer playing a left back. I'm pretty sure he's a, an attacking midfielder in real life. But uh, I guess as players age, they do change positions sometimes in Football Manager. And now Ahmad finds Deschamps on the left-hand side. Poor defending from Andres, let him go by him without too much of a, of a challenge. And we progress towards the 70th minute of the game. As usual, Hannibal needs to come off. I feel like I say that every game. Katic can come on instead. Playing as the Mazala, Carpentieri can come off. Soul Funnel can come on. And that's well claimed by Sarakaya. Got up to it really well and uh, didn't make a mistake. And it's 5 0. We've scored again from our, shot, our only shots. That's really, really nice play. Good assist as well for Sarakaya. And a goal on his birthday for Mino. And we will proceed with the tactical change. Get Saul Funnel off. And Sorrentino is going to take this free kick. Headed away by McLenahan. And Andres is there to sweep up. Finds Mino in a lot of space on the right hand side. And crosses it in only into the head of Pembele. I think while there's this little moment going on. We will perhaps put Dorgan in midfield and have... Yeah, we'll get Gwiel on. Katic can take the box-box role with Dorgan playing as the Mazala. And now Sibanda. Divine. Good interception from Diaz. And now Mino can break. Finds Dorgan. Gets a return pass and... 6-0. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a performance. We've not even created a whole lot of chances. It's just that we've scored every single chance we've had, apart from well, one. I'm not sure when that seventh shot happened, but uh, we're on the more clinical end of of, uh, of the spectrum today. Icaro Mitchell. Headed clear by Frank. And McLenahan, once again with lots of space on the edge of the box, but he's closed down quickly there. Much better than last time. And Frank is able to clear out Gentilini into Katic. What a ball into Gwiel, and perhaps if he were fit, he would have been able to head that home, but didn't quite get it on target when really he should have. Vasquez. Sends the corner in. Rebounding to him, but he's only given it directly to you funnel. And now Mino looks to start a counter-attack. Gwil in a bit of space on this right-hand side. He needs to find a few options in the centre, and he does. Or looks towards funnel. And uh, was actually fouled by De Ketelaer. As he tried to cross it. Last couple of minutes. Lots of our team are tired. As you'd perhaps expect. At this stage of a game. That was quite a convincing victory. Um, let's let's give them the happiest team talk of all. 6-0. Was not what I was expecting away to Ajax. Because they are actually a good team. So that was a bit of a surprise. A couple of players needing rests. And uh, Funnel will not be coming back because Liverpool want to try him out next season, which is a shame, but totally understandable. We are unfortunately now five points behind Inter Milan after a draw with AC Milan. That means that this game really is a must win if we're going to have any chance of winning the title. If we don't do that here, I think it's probably gone. 
we've gone with most of our strongest squad. We've got like sort of Katic, Papetti, um, Belly wouldn't necessarily be in our main squad, and uh, Funnel as well, all starting. So there's a few few new faces just because of a uh, bit of tiredness. Um, we actually won 3-2 in the second leg against Ajax, so uh, not quite as impressive as the first game. Um, or nowhere near as impressive as the first game. <laughs> But, uh, you know, good enough to get us through pretty comfortably. We went through 9-2 on aggregate. So, you know, you'd, you'd take that before a, a Europa League quarterfinal, I think. Um, and here we go with the game against Napoli. One of the more important league games that we've had recently. Um, let's see if we can make an impression here and stamp our authority over the third place team. And uh, if we can, hopefully, that will allow us to get back within two or three points of Inter Milan and that's a good finish from Sorrentino almost looped it over the keeper which is, it was a bit of an unusual animation but uh, a very good finish from him nice bit of play and uh, yeah he's, he's really scored quite a lot recently so um, one to watch out for I wonder if, has he got a good finishing stat or something eight finishing so no 13 long shots is decent so maybe it's that he uh, he's just been very good recently for us, and you know I've, I've I think I've really enjoyed, to be honest, having him in the in the squad since the start of this season. He was a, a good signing for thirty million or so, and that's off the bar from Lawrence. Unlucky there not to score. Sarakaya was beaten all ends up, up all ends up there, and um, yeah, we could do with getting a bit more control over this game because we've not got the better of the possession, and we've only had two shots, of which one, of course, was the goal. But, um, you know, we, we probably want to have a few more shots, a few more chances and just a bit better uh, control in terms of possession as well. And that's a great ball into Dawood. Good save from Sarakaya. Dawood's able to keep it in. Finds Cortels. And that's been won back by Dorgan. Mino now looking to start a counter-attack, but clearly nothing came of it. We are playing against Julian Nagelsmann, actually, as the manager of Napoli. Doing very well in real life with Bayern. Um, but uh, thankfully not able to beat us so far today. I don't know why Papetti keeps getting upset um, with my team talks when no one else is really having any issues with them. Um, I think he's vaguely happy now. He gave up on trying to get a new contract because he, he's 32, so I didn't really want to give him a new contract, particularly for more like about double the amount of money that he was earning already, if not more. Um, the issue with contracts here is that all the players seem to want 250 to 300,000 pounds and if I did that, I mean admittedly Juve's got a huge wage budget here, if I did that then you know it's difficult to get anyone on a lower wage and yeah. Also it's a lot harder to sell them as well um, when they become not quite so good and there's a few of them that are already earning a bit more than they really be are deserving so um, trying not to allow any mistakes with new contracts and just be a bit more stingy should we say with with our squad management in order to avoid any unhappiness in the future and that's a really good pass from Dorgan I think Mino was just offside that's unlucky though and it is called back for offside how close was this it was yeah he's just uh, one step too far should we say unlucky there and Ajimon now. Not the greatest pass, and Cortels is able to intercept pretty easily. Now Desio running at Gentilini finds not the right pass. Betty's done well there to intercept. It's just really well positioned to actually deal with that. And now Mino, and that's his 42nd goal of the season. This guy is something else. Even when he's having a, a slightly off game, he stepped up. He is such a good player. I think he's probably my favourite player to save so far. Perhaps along with Rosas and Belly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting to have him. Oh yeah, and of course Sakar. Um, having a goalkeeper as good as that who came from the Peruvian league for a million or so is quite exciting. Shame he went to Chelsea, but we are going to try and get him in the summer when uh, we're able to get some uh, non-European players again. Don't know quite how it works with whether it's just the players you register or you can only sign that number of players because if you can only sign that number of players then we'll probably have already done our allocation because we've got um, Herrero, the Mexican um, from Santos Laguna coming in and also uh, Marule, the uh, guy who was at Cape Town Spurs and is now at Jiangsu Suning coming in for 30 million and he's South African. 
we'll see. Oh, that's an awful pass, and Funnel's able to pick up the pieces here and put it home pretty easily in the end. He's going to come off immediately after that, and uh, Alessandrini will come on. Sorrentino can also come off for Diaz. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're in a really strong position now, 3-0. Slightly surprised, because it did seem like they were controlling the game and we were just nicking that, uh, that one goal. But uh, we've really come into our own in this second half, I think. And uh, yeah, really, that ever since that disallowed goal, we've been on top form. Adjimon now. Good ball into Diaz. Incidentally, Adjimon does have tons of interest from different clubs as we make it 4-0 with a cutback from Diaz and a good finish from Dogan. Um, but yeah, Adjimon have got about 10, 15 clubs interested in him, including the likes of United, Liverpool, all of them. He, uh, he's certainly generating some interest. And uh, let's see how Inter Milan are getting on. Uh, they've not played yet, but they are playing Milan later. So potential that they could drop points. We'll see. Let's hope that they do. But uh, you never really know what to expect. And sadly, they did get the win. 1-0 against Milan. And that means that probably that is the end of our chances of winning the league. We're five points off with how many games left? One, two, three, four, five, six. So five points with six games left. Possible, but I think given Juve's, uh, given Inter's form this season, it's unlikely that we are going to be able to catch them at this point. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a fantastic day.